Here is a poem by E.E. E. Cummings that I've always liked. It's the first poem of Cummings that I ever remember reading. It was in high school, and I remember thinking it was the weirdest thing ever was. But I did like the musical quality of the language, even though I couldn't have explained it. It's a poem that tells a story, but not in a conventional way. As we might suspect with E.E. E. Cummings, there are many unconventional elements in this. So let's read it and then take it apart a little bit. Anyone lived in a pretty how town, with up so floating many bells down. Spring, summer, autumn, winter, he sang his didn't, he danced his did. Women and men, both little and small, cared for anyone not at all. They sowed their isn't, they reaped their same, sun, moon, stars, rain. Children guessed, but only a few, and down they forgot as up they grew. Autumn, winter, spring, summer, that no one loved him more by more, when by now and tree by leaf she laughed his joy, she cried his grief. Bird by snow and stir by still, anyone's any was all to her. Some ones married their every ones, laughed their cryings and did their dance. Sleep, wake, hope, and then they said their nevers, they slept their dream. Stars, rain, sun, moon, and only the snow can begin to explain how children are apt to forget to remember with up so floating many bells down. One day anyone died, I guess, and no one stooped to kiss his face. Busy folk buried them side by side, little by little and was by was, all by all and deep by deep. And more by more they dream their sleep. No one and anyone, earth by April, wish by spirit and if by yes. Women and men, both dong and ding, summer, autumn, winter, spring, reaped their sowing and went there came, sun, moon, stars, rain. Hmm. Well, let's start with the names everyone and no one. Those names suggest a couple of things. They suggest ordinariness and anonymity. These two people are just common people. They aren't famous or distinguished in any particular way. This is a story about two ordinary people living their lives. And the pretty how town is also anonymous. It could be like any town. But what do we make of these bells floating up and down? E.E. E. Cummings commented on this poem a couple of times throughout his life, and his idea was that the bells suggest materialism. They aren't natural things, but they saturate the atmosphere of this pretty how town. The bells help make the town pretty, but not natural. And then in many of the stanzas, we've got a line that suggests the passage of time by just naming four seasons or, or natural cycles. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. With reference to the first stanza, I'm interested in the last line. He sang his didn't, he danced his did. To put this into more conventional language, we might think of danced as what he actually, as what anyone actually did. Sang represents those aspirations and hopes that he yearned for but never achieved. The suggestion is that for most of us, what we aspire to do and what we actually do are very different things. Our aspirations often far exceed our accomplishments. So we move on to the second stanza. The first two lines are self-explanatory. No one cares much about anyone. There's nothing special about him. But I'm interested in the third line. They sowed their isn't. 
they reaped their same. The they refers to the people of this pretty how town. You know the old saying, you'll reap what you sow? Reap means to harvest. Sow, in this context, refers literally to the seed you put in the ground. If you sow seeds of corn, in the end, corn is what you'll reap. The Bible uses this phrase metaphorically to mean, if you do good deeds, you'll be rewarded with a good life, and vice versa. Well, the word isn't here doesn't seem to fit. We need a noun, but we've got a verb. Isn't stands for negativity on all levels of all kinds. They sowed their isn't. They distributed their negativity in a lot of ways, and they reaped the consequences of that. And then the last line, sun, moon, stars, rain, is another line that conveys the passage of time. Children guessed, but only a few, and down they forgot as up they grew. Well, what does that mean? What did the children guess? We've looked at enough Cummings' poems to know how much he values nature and natural cycles. Clearly, this pretty how town is not a place of nature with all the bells, the unrealized aspirations, the reaping and sowing of negative things. A few children guessed that this was not the way to live, that these were not the values to have. William Wordsworth and some of the 19th century romantic poets felt that small children were possessed of great natural insights. But as they grew older, they became contaminated by civilization and lost those insights. That's the idea that Cummings is playing with here. And then at the end of stanza three, we have another character introduced, no one. So we have two ordinary people falling in love and going about their lives. The line, she laughed his joy, she cried his grief, is clear enough. But what about the rest of it? When by now, tree by leaf, bird by snow, stir by still, those again are expressions that suggest the passage of time and the changing of circumstances. So time passes, lots of people get married, some ones and every ones, and did their thing, did their dance. But note the last line. They said their nevers, they slept their dream. That relates back to the line, he sang his didn't, he danced his did. Nevers here suggest all the things the people didn't do. The things they talked about doing and intended to do, but never got around to. And they slept their dream. But they never turn that dream into reality. Stars, rain, sun, moon, the passage of time again, and only the snow can begin to explain. The snow can explain because snow is part of nature, and we know how much Cummings values nature as a source of wisdom. How children are apt to forget to remember with up so floating many bells down. All those floating bells, suggestive of materialism and distractions from nature, cause children to forget those natural insights that they are born with. One day anyone died, I guess, and no one stooped to kiss his face. Busy folk buried them side by side. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Now we have a few lines suggesting again time passing and circumstances changing. Little by little and was by was, all by all and deep by deep, and more by more they dreamed their sleep. No one in any one earth by April, wish by spirit and if by yes. And then in the last stanza, things are wound up 
with more references to time passing and a restatement of the idea of reaping and sowing. Women and men, both dong and ding, summer, autumn, winter, spring, reaped their sowing and went there came, sun, moon, stars, rain. See how all that works? It's not so hard, is it? But what do we make of the poem as a whole? The poem was written around 1940. America was coming out of the Depression and getting ready for war. Factories were booming. Prosperity was sweeping over the country for the first time in a long time. To most people, that was a good thing. But Cummings saw it as a troubling thing. He saw the impulse towards materialism as something that took us away from nature and misdirected our values. And that's what this little story is about. Materialism keeps us from realizing our potential and our better selves. The more materialistic we become, the more we reap our isn't, and the more we say our nevers.